Let's open with prayer. Lasst uns mit Gebet anfangen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you have accompanied us through this day. Please forgive us where we lifted ourselves up and were self-righteous, where we have bemoaned our condition. Danke, dass du uns jetzt wieder zusammenrufst und so viel Nachsicht mit uns hast, Herr. Thank you that you bring us uh, back together and that you have so much understanding for, about us. Ich danke dir, dass du uns dieses Privileg gibst, dass wir hier zusammen sein können, dein Wort studieren. And I thank you that you give us the privilege to be here and to study your Wort. Und bitte segne jetzt Bruder Lorenz, wenn er vorträgt, wenn er uns dein Wort vorträgt. Please bless Brother Lawrence when he presents your Wort. Scott bei der Übersetzung. And also, Brother Scott, by the translation. Öffne unsere Herzen und Ohren und für uns. Please open our hearts and our minds and bring conviction upon us. Bitte segne auch den Livestream und alle, die von irgendwoher anders noch zuschauen. And please um, bless the Livestream and all those who are watching from wherever they are. Danke, lass uns zusammenstehen, Herr, in Jesu Namen. Amen. Thank you. Please let us stand together. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 All right. So, <clears throat> yesterday we looked at this topic, whether we are to pay the fines or not. So, gestern haben wir dieses Thema angeschaut, ob wir nun mal diesen Geldstrafen bezahlen sollen oder nicht. When an unjust law comes against us ungerechtes Gesetz gegen uns aufkommt. That is a law that would force us to break God's law. Ein Gesetz, der uns zwingen wird, Gottes Gesetz zu brechen. And we know that soon here we will be confronted with this decision when it comes to these vaccine mandates. Und wir wissen das sehr bald. Wir werden damit konfrontiert werden, wenn es zu diese ähm, Impf Gesetze oder Zwänge kommen wird. And uh, therefore we know we need to know what God's will is in this respect. Deswegen wir müssen wissen, was die Wille des Herrn ist diesbezüglich. Okay. So yesterday we looked at a couple of incidents, a couple of quotes. Gestern haben wir einige Vorfälle äh, angeschaut durch einige Zitate. Uh, and back then our pioneers they were brought into situations where they labored on Sunday. Unsere Pioniere damals waren in Situationen hineingebracht, wo sie am Sonntag gearbeitet haben. And because of these state civil laws, they were then uh, fined and imprisoned. Und wegen dieser Zivilgesetzen in den unterschiedlichen Staaten, sie waren dadurch ähm, Geldstrafen aufgehängt und auch ins Gefängnis gebracht. Okay, and we all saw that they all were united in opposing to pay these fines. Und wir haben gelesen, dass sie alle ähm, einig waren in ihrem ähm, Widerstehen, also so diesen, die waren alle einig, dass sie diesen Geldstrafen nicht bezahlen. Yeah. So they, they did not pay because they refused to acknowledge that they would be guilty in, uh, in transgressing. So sie haben nicht bezahlt, weil sie werden dadurch anerkennen, dass sie denn schuldig war in ihrer Übertretung. But then we also saw that there was this, uh, this church council in 1895. Aber dann haben wir auch gesehen, dass in 1895 gab es diesen Gemeindezusammenschluss oder Rat. And then Sister White, she basically shared what she received from God about this controversy in the southern field. Ellen White hat dann mitgeteilt, was sie von Gott erhalten hat über diese Kontroverse in den Südstaaten. Because in the southern field there was this religious bigotry with these uh, yeah, state civil laws. In den Südstaaten gab es diese religiöse Bigotry, Überheblichkeit. Fanatismus. Also religiöse Fanatismus in den wegen diesen ähm, Zivilgesetzen, ja. Zivilsonntagsgesetzen. Ja. 
And she basically said that the Lord did not want the Adventists to, to work on Sunday. Und sie hat gesagt, dass Gott wollte nicht, dass die Adventisten am Sonntag arbeiten. Yeah, if there's this kind of uh, yeah, surroundings where, with this religious fanaticism. Wenn, es, uh, wenn du dich in eine Umgebung findest, wo dieser religiöse Fanatismus ist. And people would be so um, um, people would be so opposed or let's say um, yeah, they have such opposition against these things. Die Menschen so viel uh, Widerstand gegen diesen Sachen aufbringen würden. Okay, so <clears throat> And we saw basically this word, she, she admonished everybody to be very wise and thoughtful about the situation. Okay. Und wir haben gelesen, wie Ellen White alle beraten haben, dass sie sehr ähm, weise sein mussten und sehr überlegt, wie sie in diese Sache vorangehen sollen. Okay. Um, uh, you, you are never to stir up people unnecessarily in their prejudices. That's so, what you said. Du nicht unnötige Weise die Menschen in ihre Vorurteile aufregen. Okay, so that was basically just a short summary. So das war eine kurze Zusammenfassung von gestern. And we saw also a case where somebody then was, you know, a public collector came to him and he took all his goods away. Und wir haben auch einen Fall von einem Fall gelesen, wo ein, wie heißt das nun? Gerichtsvollzieher. Eine Gerichtsvollzieher gekommen ist und seine Gute, seine Gut beschlagnahmt hat. And he was not resisting. Und er hat dem nicht widerstanden. Uh, but he was also not helping him to say what he can take and what he cannot. Aber er hat ihm auch keine Hilfe geleistet, in dem, dass er sagen konnte, was er nehmen und was nicht. And he basically so. said, all right, I just submit to this unjust treatment and you just need to carry it out all by yourself. I'm not, I'm having nothing to do with it. Also ich unterwerfe mich diese ungerechte Behandlung, aber damit habe ich nichts zu tun, das musst du alles alleine tun. And, um, <coughs> and also we saw an instance, and we will come to this again now in this evening, where some brethren, they were basically then forced to work out their fine. Und wir haben auch einige Vorfälle gelesen, und dazu werden wir heute auch noch kommen, wo einige Geschwister ihre Geldstrafen aufarbeiten, aufarbeiten, abarbeiten, können. abarbeiten können. Okay. okay, and there we saw that this white says, all right, if this would come up, the situation, you just should also submit, and it's not wrong to work out your funds. Okay. Wir haben auch gesehen, dass Ellen White gesagt hat, wenn diesen Fall vorkommen sollte, das ist auch nichts äh, falsch, äh, deine Geldstrafen abzuarbeiten, so es dem auch hingeben. Okay, so when you go now to your notes, um, just skip please the first eight pages. So, gehen wir zu den Notizen und überspringen wir die ersten acht Seiten. Because the first eight pages are basically what we read yesterday. Die acht Seiten ist das, was wir gestern gelesen haben. And, um, <coughs> can you just throw out the case? Because... Yeah, no, so let's go to the heading God's will regarding the civil Sunday laws. So gehen wir zu dem Titel äh, und Überschrift, wo es sagt Gottes Wille bezüglich der zivilen Sonntagsgesetz. Okay. Um, and this is now taken from a, a sermon that says white made okay und das ist von einem predigt die Ellen white gehalten hat entnommen and let's just read what she says here so lass uns lesen was sie hier sagt and there are some principles that she sets for okay und das sind einige prinzipien die sie hier darlegt okay so it says everybody there alle da ja okay it says Then, with regard to the Sunday question, I read in the paper of one man who was one hour late closing his store and he had to pay a fine for it. Now, how does God look upon... Uh, no, how does God look upon it? Why? We have got to act as men and women that have minds and souls and that are under obedience to God. 
Now, if they should come here and say you must close up your work in your presses on Sunday, I would not say to you to keep your presses going, because the conflict does not come between you and your God. So, what is she advising the brethren? So, welchen Ratschläge gibt sie den Geschwistern? Yes, in this case, yeah, this conflict, yeah, when it's just a state, a state civil law, or just a civil law, civil Sunday law, this conflict would not come between you and God. Okay? Also in this Fall, wo es nur eine Zivil Sonntagsgesetz ist, das werde nicht zwischen dir und Gott kommen. Yeah, so you just should then obey, and uh, you can use the time better, or in a different way, let's say. So, du sollst nur dem gehorchen, du kannst die Zeit anders benutzen. As we will see what she says. So we will see what she says. Because in the next sentence she says. In the next sentence she says. Okay, uh, Mark, you know where we are? Um, um, uh, page God's will regarding the civil Sunday laws. Page so. 9. God's will okay. regarding the civil Sunday laws. 1273 in the middle of the first paragraph. Okay. So we just uh, read. The <clears throat> first paragraph it says, When they go a little farther and say you must keep Sunday and you shall not observe Saturday, then everyone that took the position would have the mark of the beast. Okay, so what's the difference here? So, what is the unterschied here? Yeah, if they say, right, you, you also must rest uh, on the sat Saturday. Work. Uh, yes, work, thank you. Uh, on the Saturday. Dann sagen sie, dass du musst auch noch dazu am Samstag arbeiten. Uh, then you should obviously disobey this law because this would be be then the, the mark of the beast. Okay. Dann solltest du auf jeden Fall diesen Gesetz nicht gehorchen. Das wäre denn das Malzeichen des Tieres. Yeah, so the mark of the beast is not so much Sunday rest, but it's Sunday sacredness and Sabbath violation. Okay. So, Der Malzeichen des Tieres ist nicht so sehr der Sonntagsruhe, sondern es ist Sonntagsruhe und äh, Sabbatarbeit. And where do we see this in the Bible? Und wo sehen wir das in der Bibel? Where do we see in the Bible that the Sunday law is more about the Sabbath violation than the Sunday rest? So, wo sehen wir in der Bibel? Das, der Malzeichen des Tieres ist eher über den äh, Sabbat arbeiten als Sonntagsruhe. Exodus 34, 2. Right? Mose, Kapitel 5. So, let's go there. Gehen wir dahin. Exodus 5 verse 5. It says, And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. So what was Moses telling the people to do? To rest from the burdens, which is, was the, keeping the Sabbath, right? Den Burden zu ruhen. Also er hat sie gesagt, dass sie den Sabbat halten soll. In Nummer 6. Vers 6. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and the officers, saying, Ye shall not more give the people straw to make brick as heretofore. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tale of the bricks which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them, ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go out and sacrifice to our God. Let their more work be laid upon the man, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. Okay, so, so here we can see he gave them extra work to do that they would break the Sabbath. Right? So here can we see he had sie zusätzliche Arbeit um, anbefohlen, damit sie den Sabbat brechen. Okay, so 
Now let's go back to the quote. So, so Zitat in den Notizen zurück. So therefore she says, when it's just a civil Sunday law and you still can keep the Sabbath, you should obey the civil Sunday law, but as soon as they make it a religious Sunday law, which then forbids Sabbath observance, you should disobey it. Okay? Also wenn es nur eine Zivilgesetz ist, wo es geht gar nicht um den Sabbat, dann sollst du es gehorchen. Aber sobald, dass sie Arbeit auf den Sabbat zwingen, dann sollst du es brechen. So, next paragraph. Next Absatz. If the authorities should say, don't carry on work here on Sunday, and we know what they will do, there's plenty you can do. You can go on missionary work and make that a day in which you will see that you can accomplish in the work of drawing souls to Jesus Christ. For God does not want us to gratify the devil by defying the powers. You know, when Peter asked Christ about paying tribute, he said, Are not all the children free? But he said, Lest he should offend them, do go down to the sea, and the first fish that you take up, open its mouth, And do you take that piece of money and do you pay for yourself, Peter, and for me? Okay, so that's this principle. Uh, as long as you don't transgress the law of God, you should obey these civil powers, even though they might be unjust. Here is the principle. Solange dass die Gottes Gesetze nicht brechen, sollst du die zivilen Mächten gehorchen, auch wenn es ungerecht ist. Okay, next uh, quote. Next Zitat. And this is something we looked at yesterday already. This is eine Sache, die wir bereits gestern angeschaut haben. So the question is, is it wrong for our brethren to work out their fines? Was the question. Die Frage ist es falsch für unsere Geschwister ihre <coughs> Geldstrafen aufzuarbeiten? The answer is. Abzuarbeiten. Und der Antwort ist. Christ, the King of Glory, carried the cross upon which he was about to be crucified. The people had not the slightest semblance of right to inflict this upon him, but he did not refuse to submit. Christ suffered and died for us. Shall we refuse to be partakers of his sufferings? Let the servants pay tribute as the master did, lest others be offended. So in this last sentence, what is she referring to? So in this last sentence, what do you mean? When she said, let the servants pay tribute as the master did, lest others be offended. Das fällt bedrückt, der letzte Satz. Ich würde nur passen, Christ. Yeah, but it's what she referred to in the paragraph before, in this sermon, uh, right? Where basically, Peter was, he went to the fish to get this mm. coin out of his mouth. Okay. So Petrus, er ging zum Fisch, um diesen Münze aus dem Mund zu holen. Yes. And the principle was, uh, don't defy these state powers unnecessarily. Okay. Das Prinzip ist, ähm, verachte den Staatsmächten nicht unnötigerweise. Everybody sees the connection? Or should we? Ja, aber okay. Somebody spoke to me about this, and I also answered this very point from Desire of Ages, but this is talking about a religious law. So, das hier spricht über ein religiöses Gesetz. Uh, no. it's, okay, it's a religi it was a religious statute that had been imposed upon them, that they, they paid this tribute to the temple every year. Now, if Christ had just openly paid that, he would have been denying that he was the Messiah. And this is what they were trying to get him to do. So, das hier war ein also, religiöses Gesetz, I mean, dass sie Tribut in den Tempel jedes Jahr zahlen sollten. Und die haben versucht, dass Christus das zahlen sollte. Und hätte das der getan, dann hätte er dadurch verneint, dass er den Christus sah. Das Wort Christ did is he paid it, but he did it in a way without denying God. Aber was Christus denn tat, er hat es wohl bezahlt, aber auf so eine Art und Weise, dass er Gott, he was God, so. dass auf so eine Art und Weise, dass er nicht verneinte, dass er Gott sei. Because he did a miracle by doing it. Weil er hat eine Wunder bewirkt, indem dass er das getan hat. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, but anyways, this is the principle that she sets forth, right? She just go yes. up again to the last paragraph we just read. Das ist der Prinzip, die sie hier gibt. Uh, just uh, let's go to the last paragraph. It says, if the authorities should say, don't carry on work here on Sunday. So it's speaking now about the state power, okay? Wir sind von zwei Satz wieder. Also spricht hier über Staatsmacht. 
and we know what they will do, there's plenty you can do. You can go on missionary work and make that day in which you will see what you can accomplish in the work of drawing souls to Jesus Christ. For God does not want us to gratify the devil by defying the powers. You know when Peter asked Christ about paying tribute, he said, Are not all the children free? But he said, Lest ye should offend them, and then go and get this money out of the fish mouth. Okay. And this is what she's referring to in the next quote in the last sentence. Okay. Letzte Zitat, die wir gelesen haben, das ist das, woraus sie nimmt Bezug in den letzten Satz. Okay, now let's continue in the next quote in the second paragraph. So, one side, and mm -hmm. in this quote, let the servants pay tribute as their master did, it's speaking about Christ carrying his cross. Christ didn't need to carry the cross, he could have refused to carry that cross, that's unrighteous what you're doing. No, but the, this is referring to what we just read. Right. Okay, but how, 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 how are you? Okay, you're saying that, but yes. I don't see the connection. Okay, then let's go to the Bible. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 17. And then we are to Matthias 17. Huh? Uh, Simon yes. yeah, but that's uh, eventually carried the cross, but, but at yes. the beginning it was laid upon Christ. Matthew, yeah? Matthew 17. Why are we saying that's what it says in SPM 25.7. Yes. Christ the King of Glory carried the cross upon which he was about to be crucified. The people had not the slightest semblance of right to inflict this upon him. We didn't have any rights to make him carry his cross. But he did not refuse to submit. Christ suffered and died for us. Shall we refuse to be partaker of his sufferings? Let the servants pay tribute carry the cross as the master did, lest others be offended. It's just a principle. No, no, I, I see that okay, it's a principle, but my question is, because in the context that's talking about carry the cross, how does he bring that to talking about paying this tribute Tribute in yes. the, the, the paragraph before? It's, it's about the civil power of laying something on you. Yes. Let's just go to, uh, to the uh, story, Matthew 17. Matthew 17. <coughs> Um, beginning in verse 24. This is the story. Okay. 24 to 27. And if you have a header, I have a header, it says the temple half shekel. Because there was a law of, in the law of Moses, it was said that everybody had to pay every year half a shekel or every male had to pay every year half a shekel of temple tithes. Okay. So now let's read in verse 24. Verse 24. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute, tribute money, came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? So it's about paying this tribute. So okay. it's handled sich über diese Tribute zu bezahlen. Okay. Verse 25. He saith, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? Peter saith unto him, Of strangers. Jesus saith unto him, Then are the children free. So basically he says, uh, I'm, I'm free from this text. Uh, Jesus sagt, ich bin frei von dieser ähm, Zwang. Ja, von dieser Steuer. Ja. Steuer. Ja. But he said, then says in 24, uh, 27, sorry. In Vers 27 sagt er weiter. Even though he was free, he said, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast an hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money, that take and give unto them for me and thee. Okay, so it was a whole shekel was able to pay for Peter and for Jesus. And why did he do it? Und warum hat er das getan? What does it say in 27? Not to offend. Yes, okay. Kein Anstoß zu bringen. So it was the story about paying this tribute money not to offend so, un unnecessarily. Okay. 
diese Tributgeld um, zu bezahlen, so als nicht unnötigerweise Anstoß zu erleben. Und das ist, was Sister White sagt hier in SPM 25.7 in der letzten Sentence. Und das ist, was Ellen White sagt hier in diesem Zitat, SPM 25.7 in der letzten Satz. Es sagt, let the servants pay tribute as the master did, lest others be offended. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yes. And this is also what she referred to earlier in this quote above. Okay. Und das ist, was sie auch in diesem Zitat darüber, die wir zuvor gelesen haben, zitiert. Okay, now let's go to the next quote, SPM 26.1. Jetzt gehen wir zum nächsten Zitat, SPM 26.1. When brought before courts, we are to give up our rights, unless by so doing we are brought into collision with God. So, you know, we should not defend our own rights. So wir sollen unsere eigenen Rechte nicht verteidigen. Yeah, we should only defend God's law. Wir sollen nur Gottes Gesetz verteidigen. So if they treat us unjustly, so wenn sie uns ungerecht behandeln, we need to submit to this. Wir müssen uns dem hingeben. But we should obviously not yield any particular of God's law. Okay. Aber wir sollten kein Stück von Gottes Gesetz hergeben. Because she goes on to say, sie sagt, we are not pleading for our for our right, but for God's right to our service. Instead of resisting the penalties imposed upon, uh, sorry, instead of resisting the penalties imposed unjustly upon us, it would be better to take heed to the Savior's word: When they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Okay, so it would be better, she says, to avoid these penalties at all if you can. Okay. Sie sagt, es wäre besser, dass du diesen Strafen vermeiden konntest, wenn es möglich wäre. So, okay. Everybody sees this. Can you ever see? Okay. Now let's go to the next. Uh, quote. So next, let's see that. And this is a quote that we that we read yesterday already. This is a quote that we read yesterday. And remember, this this question that was asked here was: Is it okay if people work out their fines? Okay. Gedenke, die Frage, die gestellt worden ist, ist war: Ist es okay, wenn die Menschen ihre Geldstrafen abarbeiten? Now let's go back to this case where the brethren were forced to work out the fines. Lass uns diesen Fall anschauen, wo die Geschwister ähm, gezwungen worden waren, ihre Geldstrafen abzuarbeiten. So it says, following this four more of our brethren, this time in Henry County, were indicted. They were J. H. Dodge, J. Moon, S. M. Lorry. Jess Stam and W. D. Ward. The first four were convicted. They employed no lawyers, believing that it was of no use and believing the scriptures where the Lord promises to speak through his people when they are brought before magistrates. Also remember, they didn't use any lawyers. Okay, and this is what we also should do. Okay. They appeared for themselves and they were, were convicted, refusing to pay their fines, they were placed in the prison there at Paris. And this was not France, but Paris, Tennessee. This is Paris in Tennessee USA. The people soon got tired of boarding them in the parish jail, and so an effort was made to work them, and finally an old obsolete law was uh, resurrected by which they discovered that the Paris jail was a county workhouse. Then our brethren were placed in the chain gang and worked, but only for a few days, as their time had nearly expired. I think three of them were in jail over the Sabbath. And an effort was made to work them on the Sabbath, and a resolution that, uh, to that effect passed the board, but the sheriff refused to act in the matter. He said, Gentlemen, if you undertake to work these men on Saturday, I will have nothing whatever to do with the matter. And his earnest effort in their behalf saved them from the experience of an attempt to force them to work on the Sabbath. 
So what did they try to do with them? So was haben sie versucht mit denen zu tun? Yes, to break God's law and to force them to work on self. Das Gesetz zu brechen, indem dass sie sie zwangen oder versuchen zwang zu zwingen am Sabbat zu arbeiten. They were then told that it would go harder with them if they persisted. And so, when they came to trial this time, not only did the jail and the chain gangs stare them in the face, but also the possibility that the severest punishment might be inflicted to compel them to work on the Sabbath. But they did not flinch. Okay, so here we can see they wanted now to exercise force to compel them to work on the Sabbath. So here can we see that they wanted Gewalt aufbringen oder Zwang aufbringen, dass sie am Sabbat arbeiten. And this was here in the year 1893. Und das war in 1893. But Aber in das Jahr 19, 1900 hat Ellen White eine Vision erhalten. And there she received instruction with respect to this kind of situation. Okay. Da hat sie Anweisungen erhalten in Bezug auf diese Art von Situation. So let's read this quote. So let's read this next citat please. It says, I rise at 2 a.m. to write a few words in regard to those of our people who are being thrust into the chain gang and forced to work on the Sabbath. Okay? Situation just like what we just read. A situation so we so even gelesen haben. It is the spirit of Antichrist that inspires this oppression. Men are inspired by Satan to execute his purposes against God. The Lord has said, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is the sign between me and you throughout your generations. None should, none should disobey this command in order to escape persecution. But let all consider the words of Christ. When they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. If it can be avoided, do not put yourselves into the power of men who are worked by the spirit of Antichrist. If the payment of a fine will deliver, your, deliver our brethren from the hands of these oppressors, let it be paid, rather than allow them to be forced to work on the Sabbath. Everything that we can do should be done that those who are willing to suffer for the truth's sake may be saved from oppression and cruelty. Okay, so here we can see, in this situation here, what, what, what would have been God's will? So here can we see, in this situation, what would have been the will of the Lord? In this case, it was better to pay the fine so in this yeah. Fall, it was better to pay the fine than to let them basically suffer this kind of oppression that they would be forced to break the Sabbath. Okay. So that this kind of oppression Erzwungen werden, dass sie den Sabbat brechen muss. Okay. So, and she sets forth here this principle, you know, that um, if it can be avoided, do not put yourselves into the power of men who are worked by the spirit of Antichrist. Sie setzt diesem Prinzip vor, dass du sollst dich nicht in den Händen derer legen, die bewegt sind von the Geist des Antichrist. And she uses the saying of Christ, when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. So this is this principle. Okay. Sie benutzt diese Aussage Christi, wenn sie dich in diesen Stadt verfolgen, dann flüchte zu einer anderen. Okay. So basically, avoid persecution uh, as much as possible. Sagt, uh, vermeide Verfolgung, so weit es geht. Okay. But now let's continue. Let's look at some further cases. We need to bring all these things together. Einige weitere Fälle anschauen, bringen wir diese Sachen zusammen. So this was also in the state of Tennessee. Hier war das auch in der Bundesstaat Tennessee. So let's read this case. Aus diesem Fall lesen. It says, as previously stated in these columns, the judge imposed a fine of two dollars and a half in each case, and then immediately remitted the fine, expressing his regret that he could not also remit the costs, declaring that his sympathies were with the defendants, but that it was his duty to administer the law as he found it, and not as he, think, as he might think that it ought to be. Okay, so here this judge was actually sympathetic with the Adventists. Okay. And this is also what we need to understand. Okay, these judges, 
that they might be convicted that it is false, but still they are bound to execute the law. Okay. Das müssen wir verstehen. Also diese Richter, sie mögen zwar vielleicht überzeugt oder überführt werden, dass das, was sie tun, ist falsch, aber die sind gebunden an das Gesetz, es auszuüben. Yeah, so as soon as the unjust law is passed and established, yeah, the judge also himself is bound to this law. Okay. So, sobald das ein ungerechtes Gesetz ähm, wird gemacht und etabliert irgendwie dann diese Richter ist gebunden daran nach diese Gesetz zu handeln. Okay. So let's continue. Lesen wir weiter. Um, Elder Colcord and one of the defendants were convicted on four indictments, indictments. Two others upon two indictments each. The others upon one each. This makes their terms of imprisonment range from 20 to 76 days. One and all refuse to pay the costs, because to do so would be to recognize the justice of their conviction and to encourage further per prosecution under the same unjust law. <clears throat> so they basically said, uh, if we would pay now this fine, we would acknowledge that this was a righteous trial. Okay, sagen, law. Wenn wir diese Geldstrafe bezahlen würden, werden wir dadurch anerkennen, dass dieses Gesetz eine gerechte ist. Next paragraph. Next paragraph. Adventists are not the enemies of law and order. They are as far removed from anarchists as it is possible for men to be. They are in all points not touching their con conscientious convictions, a most law-abiding law and exemplary people. The enemies can find nothing against them except that touching the law of the God, like in Daniel 6.5. They are subject to civil rulers in civil things, not from fear but for conscience sake. But in all matters of religion they choose to obey God rather than men. So here we can see how important it is that we actually are this kind of people. Okay? So here can we see how wichtig it is that we are gerade this art of Menschen werden. Because if we are not obeying the civil powers, uh, they have so much at hand, we can say, you are not a law-abiding people, okay? So, wenn wir die Zivilmächten nicht gehorchen, dann haben sie es in der Hand zu sagen, ihr seid nicht ähm, Gesetz treu. Mm -hmm. Ja, Christoph, das ist dein. Yes. So, die Anarchisten sind den Südmacht. Exactly. So, yeah, therefore we need to pay attention to keep the laws of the state as much as possible. Deswegen müssen wir Acht darauf geben, dass wir die Gesetze des Staates so weit wie möglich behalten. And Sister White, she has a quote where she says that yeah, when you come into these courts of law, yeah, you, will be you will be surprised what charges and accusations can come against you from past statements you made. Okay. Und Ellen White hat ein Zitat, wenn sie sagt, wenn du in diesen... Um, diese Gerichte, diese Gesetzesgerichte hineinkommst, du wirst erstaunt sein, was für Anklagen äh, gegen dich erhoben werden konnte <coughs> durch Sachen, die du in die Vergangenheit vielleicht gesagt hast. And we need to understand, these people are professionals and they will go through every information they have they can gather against you. Okay? Wir müssen verstehen, dass diese Ankläger, diese Menschen sind Profis und sie werden mit einem, einem Kamm durch alles hindurchgehen alle Informationen, was sie über dich bekommen können. Okay. So, <coughs> let's continue. Lesen wir weiter. Nor is this an exhibition of religious fanaticism. The principles thus stated is known and recognized by the best and most enlightened thinkers uh, everywhere. In his work on moral philosophy, President Fairchild of Oberlin College says, it is too obvious to need discussion that the law of God, the great principle of benevolence, is supreme and that we ought to obey God rather than man, in any case of conflict between human law and the divine. There are cases so clear that no one can question the duty to refuse obedience. In all times and in all lands such cases have arisen. In a case of this kind, either of two courses, either of two courses is possible, to disobey the law and resist the government in its attempt to execute it, or to disobey and quietly suffer the penalty. So that's the two options. So here are the two options. The first is revolutionary and can be justified only when the case is 
flagrant and affect such numbers that a re revolutionary movement will be sustained. The second course will, in general, commend itself to considerate and conscientious men. It is a testimony against the law as unrighteousness and at the same time a recognition of government as a grave interest. Okay, so if you don't resist this unjust law and suffer the penalty. So, wenn du nicht diese ungerechte Gesetz widerstehst und die Folgen dafür ähm, erleidest. Uh, you give a testimony that this law is unrighteous, but still you prove that you don't rebel against the government. Okay. Also dadurch gibst du ein ähm, Zeugnis, dass dieses Gesetz ist nicht gerecht, aber zugleich würdigst du die ähm, Gesetzgeber, also die ja. Regierung. Yes. Okay, next paragraph. Nächster Absatz. The Baptists and Quakers of New England acted upon the same principle. They disobeyed the laws which interfered with their religious liberty and quietly submitted to the penalties imposed upon them, but did not resist the rulers and the measure of religious liberty enjoined, uh, enjoyed in this country today is due largely to their fidelity to principle. The disobedience of the unjust law in quiet submission under unjust punishment witness so loudly against un injustice and oppression that men were unable to see the real principles involved and were led to recognize them to some degree. When Elder Holmes, the Baptist minister of Mas Massachusetts, was sentenced to pay a fine or to be whipped in 1651, he said, I would not give my body into your hands upon any other account, yet upon this I would not give a hundredth part of a when pump peak to free it out of your hands, and I make as much conscien conscience of unbutting one bottom, a uh, button of my coat, as I do in paying the thirty pounds in reference thereunto. So he basically said, yeah, I would just gladly accept this whipping instead of paying the fine. I said, I had this. Prügel annehmen anstelle von diesen Geldstrafe zu bezahlen. Auspeitschen. Auspeitschen. Mm. So in the next paragraph it says. Nächster Absatz sagt es. On the same principle, the Adventists refuse to pay a single penny. They have defrauded no man. They have corrupted no man. They have offended against no just law. They will not resist when they are put in prison. They will not seek freedom by flight, but they will not become parties to the wicked thing by voluntarily paying money as the price of their liberty. In other words, they will not purchase freedom by the payment of fines. Okay, so this was basically the arguments the pioneers had back then why they were refusing to pay these fines. Okay. So, dies war die Argumente oder die Gründe, warum die Pioniere damals geweigert haben, diese Geldstrafen zu zahlen. Okay, and you can see it's ju uh, just reason, okay? Reason? Not Just reasoning. Law. Yeah. Ah, you can see that it's correct to be thought of. Yeah, the yeah. point is, by doing that, they're not breaking God's law, they're, they're upholding God's law. But I think Sister White is saying, okay, that's right, and there's, there's nothing really wrong with what you're doing, but you should do everything to avoid that as possible, if I understand it correctly. Mm. Uh, just translate. So, <coughs> Das ist ähm, nicht falsch, was sie hier tun. Und Ellen White sagt das auch, aber sie sagt dennoch, du sollst versuchen, so weit wie möglich das zu vermeiden, wenn ich das richtig verstanden habe. I mean, what, what says White first said, yeah, don't bring yourself into this situation by laboring on Sunday. Okay. So Ellen White hat gesagt, zuerst bringe dich erst nicht in diese Situation hinein, indem dass du auf Sonntag Okay, uh, but, but if you then come into the situation where you're forced, you're forced then to break the Sabbath in this imprisonment. Aber wenn du dann in diese Situation hineingebracht worden bist, wo du gezwungen wirst, den Sabbat zu brechen in diesem ähm, Gefängnis, also diese Arbeitslager, yeah, then it would be better uh, to that somebody bails you out uh, that you're not. Forced to break God's law. Dann okay. wäre es besser, dass jemand dich rauskauft, dass du nicht gezwungen wirst, Gottes Gesetz zu brechen. Well, this doesn't answer the question about 
when they ask you know, they bring a law that's forcing you to break God's law. Aber das antwortet nicht der Frage, wenn sie ein Gesetz herausbringt, der dich zwingt, Gottes Gesetz zu brechen. So the question is, do you, you're going to to do that, so natürlich, do you du wirst fine? weigern, das zu tun. Sollst du die Geldstrafe bezahlen? Yes. I mean, that's also something, uh, I mean, I, I understand totally here this, this concept that A.T. Jones lays out. Yeah, okay. so ich verstehe understand. diesen Konzept, die hier A.T. Yes. Jones hier darlegt. Uh, but I also want to still more fully consider what Sister White wrote in this earlier quote. Okay. Aber ich möchte mehr in Erwägung bringen, was Ellen White in diesem früheren Zitat schrieb. She, mm. the, the thing is, they brought themselves yes. into that situation. Das, die Sache ist, ist, dass sie haben sich selbst in diese Situation unnötigerweise hineingebracht. And the point is, when they, they make a, a law that's forcing to make a law, you're, you're not You're not disobeying it unnecessarily. Aber wenn sie ein Gesetz aufbringen, der dich not. zwingt, Gottes Gesetz zu brechen, dann du hast dich nicht unnötigerweise da hineingebracht, du bist halt in der Fallstrecke. Yes. Uh, of course, yeah. you need de definitely to refuse. Du okay. musst auf jeden Fall das weigern. And, uh, and they will then fine you, obviously. Sie okay. werden dich dann Geldstrafen auflegen, sicherlich. But the question is, in a sense, if they then Put you into jail. Aber die Frage okay. ist, wenn sie dich denn in Gefängnis setzen. And in this jail you would now be forced to break the Sabbath. Would again this quote apply or not? Und in diese Gesetz, in diese Gefängnis wärst du gezwungen werden, den Sabbat zu brechen. Wäre denn dieses Prinzip uh, well, anzuwenden oder nicht? That's an oxymoron. Yes, because you come out of the prison, you, you, no, you're going to no, get no, put no, back no, in no, again. No, 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 don't, don't, don't say that. So you don't know what I'm going to say. That we're talking about here. You're already been forced. In diesem Fall, du bist bereits gezwungen, Gottes Gesetz zu brechen. Deswegen, wegen deiner Weigerung dessen, gehst du ins Gefängnis. So, es ist nicht dasselbe wie hier. No, let's just go back to this quote by Sister White. Gehen wir zurück zu. No, I know what this quote by Sister White says, but they were they go into prison by because they broke they, they broke the law unnecessarily. Also, sie sind ins Gefängnis, hier, die Pioniere sind ins Gefängnis gegangen, weil sie das Gesetz unnötigerweise gebrochen haben. Sie sagt, es ist unnötig, dass du jetzt da drin in diesem Gefängnis bist und diesen Sabbatzwang, Arbeitszwang so, begegnet bist. Sie sagt, lerne eine Lektion davon, zahl den Geldstrafe. It wasn't a ju an unjust law. Es war nicht ein ungerechtes Gesetz. Aber wenn sie dir zwingen, den Sabbat zu brechen, dann wohl ist das ein ungerechtes so, Gesetz. You, you should also not pay it, because this principle here is saying, if you pay it, because look, it says, Dieses Prinzip sagt hier, du sollst es nicht bezahlen, denn wenn du es zahlen würdest, es sagt, Okay, I think it was, um, when you go back up, It was basically saying that if they paid it, they would cause them to further their persecution with other people. Wenn sie es, es sagt, dass wenn sie diesen Geldstrafe bezahlen würde, dann würde das diesen Ungerecht Recht geben, dass sie dann ähm, yes, anderen den Geldstrafen first, auferhängen würden. Was the first uh, paragraph? The last ah, yes, yes, the, the last sentence. The, the, the end of the the end of okay, so if you go just. Uh, Yeah, yeah. One and all refused to pay the cost because to do so would be to recognize the justice of their conviction and to encourage further prosecution under the same unjust law. But technically, this law was not it unjust. It wasn't unjust. Yes. Right? Technisch gesehen, diese, diese Gesetz war nicht ungerecht. They just didn't understand that. Die yes. haben es noch nicht verstanden. So Sister White gave them clarity, saying, look, okay, the law is unjust. To some degree, but it's not breaking God's law. So Ellen White has the clarity for She says, "Yeah, ja, this Gesetz is in gewissen Weise ungerecht, but it breaks nothing God's Gesetz." I mean, look, there's lots of laws out there that are unjust. That God would never sanction some of the laws that they've got out there in the land. Viele Gesetze in diesem Land, zum Beispiel die 
ungerecht sind und Gott wird nie einige von diesen Gesetzen befürworten, die wir hier haben. But we are to obey the civil powers. Aber wir sollten die Zivilmächten gehorchen. Wir können nicht gegen jeder Gesetz rebellieren, weil wir meinen, dass das falsch sei, was sie tun. Okay, and that's what they did here with this law. Und das ist, was sie hier mit diesem Gesetz taten. Because they took this, you have to work six days, they thought, weil es sagt, ihr solltet sechs Tage arbeiten, die haben gedacht, sie zwingen sie, Gottes Gesetz zu brechen, aber Ellen White hat Klarheit verschaffen, sagt, das ist nicht so. Wenn sie denn ein Gesetz auf uns verhängen würden, die uns zwingen, Gottes Gesetz zu brechen, denn diese Prinzipien sind richtig, die werden von uns anzuwenden. Sie hat sie nicht getadelt, sie hat gesagt, ja, wir sehen, was du tust, aber das hättest du nicht tun sollen, weil es ist unnötig, dass du überhaupt in diesen Situationen hineingekommen bist. Yes. No, I would agree with that. I mean, yes. Dem werde ich zustimmen. Okay. So, and if we come in this situation in, in the uh, prison and we have to work on Sabbath, what's... You just refuse. Mm -hmm. That's just your trial. It's like them going to get thrown in the fiery furnace. It's just exactly the same thing. Yes. So die Frage würde gestellt, denn wenn sie ein Gesetz machen, die uns zwingen, Gottes Gesetz zu brechen, und wir den Geldstrafe verneinen und wir dadurch ins Gefängnis kommen und sie dann zwingen würden ins Gefängnis, dass wir äh, am Sabbat arbeiten sollten, was sollten wir denn tun? Wir sollten es einfach verweigern zu tun, das ist eben das Feuerobenprobe. So, was ist mit allen Märtyrern? Sie haben sie in diesen Kerkern genommen und haben sie gefoltert, um sie zu zwingen, äh, zu tun, was sie wollten, und sie haben geweigert. Yes. God will get you out of it. That's all you can do. Wenn du nichts tun kannst, um aus die Sache herauszukommen, Gott wird dich da herausholen. Das ist mehr okay. kannst My du. question is because we read that uh, they can another person can pay for it to, that you come out of this. Is, is, that, is this the same situation? No, no, it's not the same situation. No, because it's because it's if they pay that fine, you're basically justifying them and saying it's a just law. Also in diesem Fall, wo sie ein ungerechtes Gesetz gemacht haben, dass du dadurch ins Gefängnis gekommen bist, wenn du denn das Geldstrafe bezahlen würdest, dann würdigst du deren ungerechte Gesetz. Aber Ellen White hat gesagt, hier zahle diesen Geldstrafe, weil dies ist noch, noch nicht ein ungerechtes Gesetz. Okay, dann let's go to the next Quote. This is by E.G. Wagner under the heading "Fines, Imprisonment, and Stocks for Sunday Labour." Wir gehen wir zum nächsten Zitat unter der Überschrift, also Geldstrafen, Gefängnisstrafen <coughs> und Stocks ist Stockstrafen. Stockstrafen. Okay. Nein, Stocks ist, wenn du eingeschlossen wirst am Marktplatz. Stimmt, das recht ist ein Stock. So let's go to this, uh, yes. this quote here by E.G. Wagner. Everybody there? So, das ist ein Zitat von J. Wagner, jeder da. Okay, it says, this is now taken from uh, Australia on a case. This is aus Australian. It says, the Melbourne Age of May 8 contains the following disp uh, dispatch from Sydney, Australia. At the Parramatta Police Court today, William and Henry Firth, Seventh day Adventists of Kellyville, were charged with exercising their worldly labors on the Sabbath day. The defendants pleaded justification, owing to their religious convictions. They were fined under Statute 20 of the reign of Charles II and were ordered to forfeit the son of five something, okay, levy in distress. In default, to be set publicly in the stocks for two hours. It is stated that the trial was very short and arbitrary. Guilty or not guilty was the demand of the magistrate. They readily admitted that they had labored on Sunday, although, of course, they could not admit that they were guilty in any sense of the word. 
No explanations, however, were allowed and the sentence promptly followed. They absolutely refused to pay the fines. Why could they not plead guilty? Because they had done no wrong. God has said, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. No guilt can, att can attach to obedience to the commandment of God. What God permits is right, and he permits all men to labor on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the first six days of the week. For a man to admit that he is guilty because he works on Sunday would be to contradict the Lord. Okay, so this was their, their reasoning. Okay. Das war der Gedanke. Yes. Und es war auch guter Gedanke. But they were not understanding this other principle that you should not unnecessarily... Unless you're forced yeah. to break God's law. Right? Aber sie haben diesen anderen Prinzip nicht verstanden, dass es sei denn, dass es absolut notwendig ist, dass du... Um, you should not stir them up. Yeah, du sollst sie nicht unnötigerweise irgendwie um, aufhören. The yeah. point is, the Lord gave them six days to work. He didn't mm. say, you will work six days. That's the, the point difference. is, der Herr hat sechs Tage gegeben zu arbeiten. Der hat nicht gesagt, ihr müsst sechs Tage lang arbeiten. Das yeah. ist der Unterschied. Okay, next uh, paragraph. Nächster Absatz. But why should this man be so stubborn as to refuse to pay their fines? They were not stubborn, but were acting on high principle. God is supreme. He has given to all men the right to work on the six working days, which include Sunday. Man following the lead of the papacy, which has exalted itself against God in thinking to change times and laws, have enacted laws and penalties against Sunday labor. When a man pays a fine for working on Sunday, he consents to buy from man the privilege of doing what the Lord has told him to do, thus tacitly admitting that men have authority above God. He may not resist imprisonment, but he must not voluntarily do anything that would be increasing in the preposterous claim set up by man, that it is wrong to do what God permits and commands. We learn also that another Seventh-day Adventist, W.C. Capps of the state of Tennessee, United States, has been convicted of Sunday labor and sentenced to fines which will command about two months imprisonment. Lest anyone should get the idea that these men were prosecuted for disorderly conduct, it should be stated that they are peaceable, hard-working farmers who were quietly about their ordinary work and that it may be clearly seen that the object of Sunday laws is really to prohibit Sabbath rest, rest upon the seventh day of the week. It is sufficient to state that these men labored more quietly than did their neighbors who are not Sabbath keepers, who also worked on Sunday, but against whom no complaint is made. This fact does not always appear. Nevertheless, it is a fact that Sunday legislation originated with Rome for the purpose of crushing out Sabbath observance. We have also to record the fact that Seventh-day Adventist publishing house in Basel, Switzerland, has been levied on for the purpose of collecting fines imposed for Sunday labor. Thus we find three governments, all professedly Protestant, doing the work of pagan and papal Rome and persecuting those who are determined to keep the commandments of God. Okay, so we can see... Uh, God gave you the right to labor on Sunday. So we can see that God gave you the right to labor on Sunday. So we can see that God gave you the right to labor on Sunday. So we can see that God gave you the right to labor on Sunday. So we can see that God gave you the right to labor on Sunday. So we can see that God gave you the right to labor on Sunday. So we can see that God gave you the right to labor on Sunday. So we can see that God gave you the right to labor on Sunday. So we can see that God gave you the right to labor on Sunday. So we can see that God gave you the right to labor on Sunday. So we can see that God gave you the right to labor on Sunday. So we can see that God gave you the right to labor on Sunday. So we can see that God gave you the right to labor on Sunday. So we can see that God gave you the right oder vielleicht der erste Korinther? Ja, es ist 1. Korinther. Es ist ein 1. Korinther Brief. Und Paul actually says it twice. Paulus sagt es sogar zweimal. So let's go first to 1. Korinther 6:12. So gehen wir zu 1. Korinther 6 und Vers 12.
It says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Okay, so here's this principle. Uh, things can be lawful for you to do, but not in every situation it, it is wise to exercise your right. Okay. Hier ist das Prinzip, es ist gesetzmäßig, also von Gott her gesetzmäßig, dass du diese Sachen tust, aber es ist nicht immer weise, dass du darauf pauchst. So, and when you also go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23, 1. Korinther 10 gehen, Vers 23, he basically says the same thing again. Dann sagt er im Grunde dasselbe wieder. Was sind die Vorzüge? 10, verse 23. 10, 23. says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Okay. So, and what was, for instance, the reason why Sister White said that in the southern field they should not labor on Sunday openly? Was war der Grund, weshalb Ellen White geraten hat, dass in den Südländern dass sie nicht öffentlich arbeiten sollten? Because she was going to bring unnecessary prejudice against the black. Unnötige Vorurteile gegen den Schwarzen bringen würden, denn sie suchen nur nach einem Grund. And it was also to, it would have shut the avenues for light because the prejudices would be so great in people's minds and so they would den, not listen to your message. Okay. Es hätte den, den Wege des Lichtes ähm, zugesperrt wegen ihrer Vorurteile, denn sie hätten okay. dich nicht mehr zugehört. Es ist dasselbe Vorurteile mit Sabbat. Sie haben diesen Sonntagsgesetz gemacht, nur um sie zu ertappen. Den Sonntagshaltern haben auch am Sonntag gearbeitet, aber die interessierten sie nicht für sie. Also dieses Gesetz war nur hauptsächlich dazu da, um Sabbathaltern in die Falle zu bringen. Deswegen hat Ellen White diese ähm, Bibelgeschichte über den Tribut äh, benutzt, weil die haben das nur Jesus gesagt, um ihn in eine Falle zu bringen. Yes. So basically, it also hier in this village, you yeah, must understand, we cannot do always the same things as other villagers do. Okay. Das ist auch das Prinzip hier in diesem Dorf. Wir können nicht immer dieselbe Sachen tun, die die anderen im Dorf tun. Yeah, even though it might be lawful to do this and all these things, but they, they look at us, they weigh us in a different balance than yes. the other Catholic Selbst people. Selbst wenn es gesetzmäßig okay. wäre, das zu tun, sie schauen uns mit anderen Augen an. Okay. So, also wenn du eine Katholik wärst. Yes. So now let's go maybe and let's read because we already know over the time. Let's see. Um, okay, let's just read the next uh, quote and then we can come for, to a close for this evening. Lass uns diese nächste Zitat lesen, dann können wir für heute zum Schluss kommen. Under the heading The Majesty of the Law. Der Titel Der Majestät des Gesetzes. <clears throat> it's also by E.G. Wagner. It says, But it will be urged, the dignity of the law must be maintained, and it must be enforced. You must not expect that the law can be set aside to suit your ideas. ideas. And surely as Christians, it is your duty to obey the law and not to defy it. Speaking about the state laws. Okay. Now his comment. Very good. And in reply, we have this to say. First, we by no means expect or desire that any exception should be made to meet our ideas. A law that is not good for everybody and at all times is not good for anything. Second, we recognize the fact that the Christian of all persons must respect the law and must by no means defy it. He that resisteth the power withstandeth the ordinance of God, and they that withstand shall receive to themselves judgment. Romans 13. 
God forbid that we should ever be found in a position of defiance or opposition to any earthly government. So he makes here this, this statement, unless a law is good for everybody and at all times this law is good for nothing. So okay. Nach dieser Aussage, es sei denn, dass ein Gesetz gut ist für alle Menschen zu allen Zeiten, dann ist es überhaupt nicht gut. And therefore they would also not file for some exemption clause on their behalf. Okay. Und deswegen can you say that on a different way? Yeah, the, therefore they would not uh, ask for an exemption clause in this. Okay. Deswegen case. werden sie nicht uh, bitten um eine Ausnahmefall. Ausnahme, Ausnahme, Ausnahme Klausel für sie. Ja. Uh, so if they would, for instance, with this vaccination law, they would, if we had the opportunity now to file for an exemption clause because of religious purposes. In diese Impfzwang, also wenn wir die Möglichkeit hätten, eine Ausnahmefall wegen religiösen Zwecke uh, zu beantragen. I don't know if this would be a just thing to do because we would basically be fine out, but all the other people in this world would. Get poisoned, you know. so, ich weiß nicht, ob das eine gerechte Sache wäre zu tun, denn jo, also wir kommen davon, aber alle anderen in der Welt, sie werden vergiftet werden. That's why he says a law that is not good for everybody and at all times is not good for anything. Deswegen sagt er, ein Gesetz, der nicht gut ist für alle Menschen und zu alle Zeiten, ist es zu nichts nutz. That, okay, that's true, but that's their choice. Also das ist Wahl, wo yeah, war, aber das ist deren no, Wahl. No, if they get forced, then it's not their choice anymore. Also wenn yeah. sie gezwungen werden, ist es nicht ihre Wahl. Their choice. It's their choice that, look, I, I, I went to work and they used to give me Friday and Sabbath off and many people used to complain, so should I say, no, no, don't do that now because it's not fair on them. So, als ich in die Welt gearbeitet habe, ich habe eine Abkommen, dass ich Freitag und Sabbat frei bekam, aber viele von meinen Mitarbeitern haben sich beschwert, also sollte ich zu meinem Chef sagen, Tu das nicht, weil das ist nicht um deren Willen fair. No, the point is about forcing other people, right? So if they would, well, they, no, they would were, be forced... They, yeah, they were forced yeah. to work... Saturday and Sunday. And Saturday, Fridays and Saturdays. Yes. So, die waren I wasn't. gezwungen, Freitag und Sabbat zu arbeiten, ich nicht. Should I say that that's, no, that's wrong, that would be unfair on them? That's Sollte ich sagen, das ist, das ist falsch, das wäre um deren Willen unfair? I'm saying he's right in what he's saying. The law is not good, but so er ist richtig, was er hier sagt. Das Gesetz ist vor allem nicht gut. They choose not to follow God. Aber sie treffen den Wahl, Gott nicht zu folgen. So they, they bring that on themselves. We choose to follow God. So if, if the Lord gives us a way out of it, we have to take that. So sie <coughs> sie wählen Gott nicht zu folgen. Also wir wählen Gott eben zu folgen. Und wenn Gott uns eine Möglichkeit gibt. Da rauszukommen. I mean, so I, mean uh, I will I will look into this again because I know that A.T. Jones uh, he was before the uh, Senate back then <coughs> defending the Adventist case. Also ich werde das tiefer anschauen, denn ich weiß, dass A.T. Jones damals vor dem Senat war, um den Advent Sache zu verteidigen. And I know I remember that he basically gave many arguments why the Adventists would never file for an exemption clause with respect to Sunday laws. Viele Argumente gegeben, warum Adventisten nie eine Ausnahmefall beantragen würden in Bezug auf Sonntagsgesetz. Okay, that's maybe so, but when you go to America, right, when you apply for a green card, the law says everybody must be vaccinated for this, this, this and this. Yeah. So, wenn du zu Amerika gehst und du ein green card, also eine Arbeit, ein Aufenthaltserlaubnis beantragst, dann sagen sie, jeder, der das bekommen werde, muss geimpft werden für dies, dies, dies und so weiter. But in the law, there's also a clause that says, except for religious purposes. purposes. Aber auch in das Gesetz ist niedergeschrieben, ein Ausnahmefall für religiöse Zwecke. So, if they offer that, Well, you can take it. Okay. So, wenn Sie das anbieten, dann kannst du das auch nehmen. So, I'm just saying you need to be clear. With But that. it says here that you would file for that, you know. So, this is here what he says. Very good. And in reply, we have this to say. First, we by no means expect or desire that any exemption should be made to meet our ideas. So, they would not, they would not take any action to apply. Try to get an exemption. Yes, try to get an exemption. But if I understand that rightly, there's not an exemption being offered. They're filing for them to 
genemic to, to give one, right? But in this case that Mark's saying is it's already in the law. Yeah, I, I mean, that's it's, the it's there, yes. Yeah, so that's what I said, yeah. Also the Unterschied wäre then in diesem Fall, das Sie beschreiben hier in den Notizen, es gebe keine Ausnahmegesetz, aber Sie sagen, wir werden nicht nach einem bitten. Ähm, aber in dem Fall, die Brüder Mark beschrieben hat, ist äh, es ist bereits in der Gesetzgebung niedergeschrieben, dass es einen Ausnahmefall gibt. Also er beantragt nicht seinen Ausnahmefall, er nimmt es nur in Anspruch. Also der Punkt ist, was hier geschrieben ist, ein Gesetz, der nicht gut ist für jedermann und zu allen Zeiten ist nicht gut überhaupt. So, das war dein Punkt. When you go to America, the law is not for everybody. It's if you have religious reasons, then you can get exempted. Yes. But if not, you take mm -hmm. it. Und wenn du nach Amerika gehst, das Gesetz ist nicht gut für jedermann und zu jeder Zeit. Es sagt, wenn du nicht religiös bist, dann wirst du diese Impfung nehmen müssen. Wenn du religiös bist, dann kannst du davon kommen. Yeah, then it's not a good law, okay. Das no, ist so law, it's not a reason not to, to take the exemption. That's nicht the point I'm yes. ein gutes Gesetz, aber das ist nicht ein Grund, diese Ausnahmefall zu verweigern. Yes, I mean, if it's offered you, yeah, you have not filed for this, but it's there, then you obviously can take it. But, um, but it's just states it's then not a good law. Okay. But so when it's angeboten is can't it's annehmen, but you can't it's not beantragen. But it's is dennoch nicht ein gutes Gesetz. But I will collect these uh, these arguments A.T. Jones made uh, why we as Adventists should not uh, file for an exemption when you know they will bring these Sunday laws. But I will these Zitate zusammenbringen wo uh, A.T. Jones sagt, die Gründe, warum wir nichts nach einem Ausnahmefall ähm, beantragen sollen. Okay. When it comes to the Sunday laws. Okay. Wenn es in Bezug auf diesen Sonntagsgesetz ist. Okay, now let's go, let's continue. So, lesen wir weiter. In uh, 131.7. 131.7. It says, here, however, is a point which our friends who have so kindly advised us seem not to have thought of. While we are, up, are upholding the majesty of the law, shall we ignore the claims of the law of God? Is English law superior to the law of God? We yield to no one in respect to the English government and its law, but we are bound to regard the government of God and his laws as still higher. It is not that we regard English law less, but that we regard the law of God more. So this is how we should also yeah, portray it. Okay. So, so sollen wir auch um, auf diese Weise unsere Fall darbringen. Uh, it's not that we want to demean the laws of the land, but that we just simply regard God's law more than the law of the land. Okay. Es ist nicht, dass wir abwerten wollen um, das Gesetz des Landes, sondern eher, dass wir nur Gottes Gesetze höher schätzen als das Landesgesetz. Let us put the case squarely. Here is a man who acknowledges that there is a God who is above all, and who has laws. Not what becomes of this acknowledgement if, when he talks about the majesty of the law, he sets laws of men above the law of God. Let it be understood then, that it is not a case of opposition to civil law, but of reverence for the law of God. Uh, this is important that we get this point across to the rulers. Okay. So, this is wichtig, dass wir diesen Punkt den Regierenden Betonen. But here is a case where the civil law directly opposes the law of God. We are forced, therefore, to say to the rulers at this, that the apostles, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. The controversy is not between us and government, but between government and a law of God. And this is this important point. This is a wichtige point. Next paragraph. As before stated, we are bound to obey the law of the land, no matter what sacrifice of money or convenience. But this is not a question of convenience, but solely one of loyalty to God's law. Our advisor has said that if we do not change our course, we shall find that the fines will amount to much more than the profits on Sundays. Very likely. 
but that has nothing to do with the case. If no principle were involved, then it would be simple stubbornness not to give way. But where principle is at stake, then inconvenience or profit has no place. Our duty is clear. We must obey God. We must not resist the laws of the land. If therefore the laws of the land come in conflict with the law of God, we must take the consequences, whatever they may be. Okay, and this is must we need to understand. Whatever the consequence is, and we we need to obey God. This is what we verstehen müssen. Was auch immer die Konsequenzen sind, müssen wir Gott treu bleiben. And and therefore, based upon this understanding, all the pioneers back then acted and rejected to refuse. Uh, Rejected to pay these fines. Und basierend auf diesem Prinzip damals, die Pioniere haben ähm, geweigert, diese Geldstrafen zu zahlen. Just based upon a wrong understanding. Yes. Aber es war basierend auf ein falsches Verständnis. Yeah, they, they didn't realize that they actually were not forced to make this bold stand at that point in time. Sie okay. haben nur nicht erkannt, dass sie nicht gezwungen waren, diese ähm, den mutigen Stand, den mutigen Stand zu dieser Zeit zu leisten. Yeah, but I think the Lord permitted this that we have now their testimony to see what we should do now in our situation. Der Herr hat das zugelassen, so dass wir deren Zeugnis haben, um dass wir in unserer Situation sehen können, wie wir handeln sollen. Mm -hmm. And so I hope that everybody could follow along. So okay. ich hoffe, dass jeder mitfolgen kann. And we can see uh, basically that we need to refuse to pay these fines. Okay. Wir sehen, dass wir es nötig haben, dass wir es weigern, diesen Geldstrafen zu zahlen. Yeah, when they force us to pay for these vaccine mandates. And we must silently and humbly submit to whatever consequence that will come upon us. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. Then let's close with our prayer.